morning friends happy thursday i'm here this lovely sunny day to have a bit of a chat with you about what i've been reading i did miss last week um actually i did do some filming but there was it was very jumbled and because I, it was my first week back full time at work um so my first 48 hour week again since um injuring my shoulder and just not working that much and I was just exhausted so none of my videos made any sense whatsoever um so when I went to edit I just gave up and so I we skipped last week last week didn't happen one thing you may have noticed if you have watched me before is that my channel name has changed um this was done this week after a bit of thought because it's actually the same as my Instagram name so the channel is now next days and it just keeps me a little bit open so that I can keep doing my Thursday reading videos and I'm still able to do my Sunday sewing videos and then I can add bits and pieces wherever. So it's kind of, it's either going to work in my favor or not, I don't know, but I, it's just broadening me a little bit. Um, so I'm able to share a bit more with you because I like to share. So that is just a little bit of a, on the side um so i am now next days we will still have our thursday reading challenge videos and we will still have the sunday sewing videos and possibly some extra ones thrown in as well but let's talk about what i've been reading because i have been reading and seeing as we're at the end of april we need to pick up books for may so let's go let's start all right, so I've written it down because I won't remember otherwise. Um, okay, so my first finish since speaking to you last was a young adult book um, based around teenagers at school. It was a mystery. It's called One of Us is Lying. Um, read this one as an ebook from my library. Um, and yeah, it was all right. Like, I wouldn't rave about it. It wasn't like... I don't know, it didn't have me on the edge of my seat, but I still managed to finish it. It kept me interested enough to want to finish it. Um, the next one that I read was actually an audio book from the library, and that was Lion um, by Saru Briley. This was... <sighs> I actually read this a long time ago, but this, so it's kind of a, it's a reread, but last time I read the book, this time I listened to the audio book. And... I really enjoyed the audiobook as well, so I would recommend both. It's a fabulous story about um, the journey of an adopted Australian. Saru was lost in India um, when he was four or five, and um, it talks about how he got lost and um, his journey while he was lost and then coming to Australia and then trying to find his family because he knew that his family must still some of his family must still be alive and so I oh, can't recommend it highly enough it was a beautiful story there is a movie of course um but you know movies and books you got to read the book don't you um okay so the next one I actually have got a copy of so part of which book club was it it was my online book club we read a man called Ove or Ove. Because it's a um, international book club, we all said his name differently. But I would just say Ove because, you know, I'm, I'm Australian and I butcher words. So <laughs> this was a beautiful story. Um, it opens up with a really grumpy old man trying to buy electronics and everybody has met or seen a man trying to buy electronics who doesn't understand what's going on and how grumpy they can get. I just thought it was really charming. Like it, it was beautifully written and gosh, he had a sad tale and just, I, I really, I love this book. I laughed out loud. I had little tears in my eyes. It was such a beautiful read. So I can highly recommend that one as well. That was really, really lovely. So next we need to conquer 
the last three books that I had for my six book challenge so that I can get bingo for the month, which I did. So uh, we'll talk first about Enola Holmes. This is book three and it's the case of the bizarre bouquets. And I really enjoy these books. They are just lighthearted, easy reads. And yeah, I just like sleuth like, and I just really enjoy them. So I will continue with this series because they make great books between chunky books. When you just want to have a quick finish, something that's not going to be really hard to follow or get into, these are perfect. They're so lighthearted and a lot of fun. So I enjoyed that one and I will continue with that series. The next one is Once and Future Witches by Alex E. Harrow. This one I nearly didn't finish. Um, I was almost ready to give up. I read probably about 20% of it, not even sure if I was really going to get into this book. And then I gave it a go, kept going with it. By the end, I couldn't put it down. So I would say if you get this one, don't give up on it. Um, it's funny because there, it was, I was so close to just going, you know what, this is rubbish. I don't like this book. And then I ended up and I probably would at the end give it three and a half, four stars because, yeah, I'd probably give it four stars. I just wish that possibly the first bit had a bit of a heavier editing process. I think a lot of that could have been culled. Um, but the story towards the end was really good. I enjoyed it. So, yes, we've got that one. Tick, tick. And then the last one so that I can have um, bingo on my April challenge is Exit by Belinda Bauer. Another great book. This one is a kind of a crime novel, like a whodunit. And I am notorious for being able to guess the ending before it happens. I just, I just do. This one, I wasn't sure what was actually going on till the end. Um, it was, it was really, really well written. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And yeah, I could recommend that one as well. So it was a good reading week, actually. Okay, so the next one that I read, this one I learned from the library, and it's The Funny Thing About Norman Foreman. This was a beautiful story about a young boy who lost his best friend. His best friend died. He's not one of those popular kids that has lots of friends. His best friend was everything to him. And they had um, plans to be a comedy duo when they were older and do a big comedy festival. Um, but then his friend died. So this is a story about, I guess, grief, comedy, healing, finding yourself. The characters in this book are so lovable. Um, it comes, it's written in the point of view of both Norman and Norman's mum. And yeah, I just, I really enjoyed this book. It's, it wasn't an intense read, but it was a beautiful read. It was a lovely book to read. I enjoyed it. And then the last thing that, um, the last book I finished for this month because it's the 29th today. There's, I'm unlikely to finish anything that I've got going at the moment. Um, yeah, definitely unlikely. So the last book that I finished was The Little Shop of Found Things, which I'll put up here. So I listened to this book. This was an audio book. Um, I listened to it through Scribed. It had all the elements that I love. There was ghosts, there was history, there was antique things. I enjoyed it. It in places was a little bit fluffy and dragged out, um, but not enough to deter me. I still enjoyed the book, loved listening to it. It was, it was great. So that is all of my finishes for what, two weeks since I've seen you. So yeah, a few books, we did well. 
And that was bingo. We managed to get every single book um, on my bingo board for last month. And now we need a new bingo board. So let's get a new bingo board started. Okay, so I have got here a new reading challenge which I have made and I'm going to put it up here. And I am also going to link it in my Instagram account and I will have a link to a downloadable challenge sheet in the description box. And we're gonna pick some new books for this month. So six prompts again, because six is great. Six, I think, gives me um, the ability to read challenge books, but also add in books um, that I'm in the mood for reading. I still wanna be able to pick books for whatever mood I'm in, you know, sometimes you need a comedy, sometimes you want something lighthearted. It just means that I am able to slip a few extra books in there without being overwhelmed, including audiobooks, which I love for commuting because I do quite a bit of driving to and from work and things. So it's nice to have my audiobooks. And I also have the occasional ebook going. I don't tend to do ebooks as often as I do audiobooks. I prefer physical copies if I'm reading. I think it's easier on my eyes, but it's nice to always have that option. Okay, so the first the first one that we've got is Stars on the Cover. So we need to find a book with stars on the cover. So this could be stars as in celebrities. It could be an autobiography. It could be just part of the illustration or the title. So it uh, gives you a little bit of room to move with that. So let's see what we can find for Stars on the Cover. Okay. Stars on the Cover. I have got this one here. This one was a thrift shop find. There you go. It's still at the price in the front. It was a thrift shop find. And it is Night Music by Jojo Moyes. So Stars on the Cover. We've got our first book. Okay, so the next prompt is written before 2015. Ah, oh. there we go. Get it out. This has been, this has been on my shelf for ages. And it is Margaret Atwood's The Handmaid's Tale. I haven't watched the series because I wanted to read the book first. So I'm, I've been missing out for so long. So there we go. Our prompt for written before 2015 is The Handmaid's Tale. So prompt number three, oh, is Mum's the Word. So Mum's the Word, it could be a book about a mum. It could be a book with mum in the title. It could be a book about a secret. Mum's the Word. Hmm, okay. Let's go exploring the shelves. Okay. We've got a book with mum in the title. The Mother Fault. The Mother Fault is by Kate Mildenhall. So I think this one is a bit of a mystery about a missing husband and the wife has um, run away to find him. So this one sounds really interesting. I'm looking forward to that one. Okay, so we have book number three. So the next one we are doing is a non-fiction. So information books, memoirs, biographies. Yes, so lots of options there. So let's have a look. I've got a few non-fiction books, but I think I already know what it is that I want to pick for this one. I think I'm going to end up reading a couple of non-fiction books this month because there's a few on my radar. But yes, I know. I think I know what I'm going to pick for this one, and it's right. So for my nonfiction, I am doing "Growing Up Disabled in Australia." So this is a topic that I am quite passionate about. Obviously, I have a son with cerebral palsy, who is a really rad kid. Like honestly, well, he's not really a kid; he's 19. Since having a son of my own with a disability, I have really immersed my entire life into working with people with disabilities. I work in a special education school. I also do support work for people with disabilities. It's just something that is very close to my heart. 
So I really have been super excited to read this one. So this book is a collation of personal stories from people with disabilities. And I think it's very easy to forget that disability is not always seen. It's something that is more common than most people actually think. I just think it's such an important book. So I'm, and I'm super, super, super excited to read this. So it has a lot of contributors. Uh, I don't know how many in total, but there are a lot of contributors to this book um, and it's all personal experiences and stories. And I just feel like it's gonna be super, super interesting. So that is my nonfiction pick for this month. Got the bin man coming. So we're gonna just chill for a few minutes, wait for the, the rubbish man. Here he goes. Hmm. He's gone. Okay. So, all right. So the next prompt that we have is female protagonist. Um, so we just need to find a book with a, a female lead character. Let's do all. Oh. Ha ha ha. Okay. This is exciting. I've been dying to read this. My female protagonist, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. So Evelyn Hugo will be my female protagonist. So this is kind of a Hollywood saga and I believe it's Evelyn telling her story about her lifetime through Hollywood and the seven husbands she has along the way. And yeah, so this just really sounds like a lot of fun and you know, the cover's gorgeous. So this is gonna be a fun read. All right, one more book to pick. And our prompt is weather or seasons. So it could be a book set in a season. It could be a book with a title about the weather, any of those things really. So it should be a fun prompt to find a book for. So let's have a look on the shelf. Okay, so I've made my pick. This is a book that has been on my shelf for a while and I've really wanted to read it. And actually one of my viewers has recently read it. And that has really helped me pick this book. So My Weather or Seasons is going to be The Four Winds by Kristen Hanna. I'm looking forward to reading this one. So Kristen Hanna is amazing. Uh, yeah, so there we go. There is my sixth prompt book. So there we have it, my May books. This is gonna be a fun month. I can't wait to share how they all go with you. Let me know, how did you go this month? Did you get a couple of books in? Did you just get one in? What prompt did you use? I'd love to know what you did. I do know that some of you actually read along with me and read similar books to me. So I did get a few messages through during the month and I do know that a few of you have bought books that I am reading as well so that we can read along together. I know that some of you have found books in your bookshelf that have been gathering dust and got stuck into them, which was fantastic. And I even got a few recommendations sent to me, which was really fun. So please let me know how you're going. Um, don't forget that you can see the prompts on my Instagram account. Um, that is where I tend to get a lot of my messaging. And yeah, it's really interesting hearing what other people are reading. I just find it very motivating. And often it'll bring up books that you've never even heard of or considered reading, which is really exciting. There's a wealth of golden reading opportunities out there. So it's great to hear what other people are reading and um, it just broadens your horizon a little bit and you can always be surprised by what you're gonna enjoy. And yeah, sometimes books that you think you're gonna love, you know? So yeah, it's a lot of fun. So please join in again. Um, it was a very successful month last month. April, well, this month, we're still in it. April has been great. Um, and May is going to be even better, I'm sure. So friends, that's it for today. Good luck with your reading this week and I will see you for more book chats on Thursday next week. Bye.